Hello, my awesome friends. I hope you're doing well. Welcome to our study for today. I'd like you to turn to page 72. This is where our journey begins today on day three. I hope you've been getting work done. Day one, we talked about manage conflict. Day two, we talked about lead a team. And today is day three, and we're talking about supporting team performance. Now, this task has a little bit of a curveball to it if you have not been exposed to this line of thinking in your project management. You know, some project managers may not have actually led teams. So when it comes to supporting team performance, you need to put on your thinking cap and put yourself in that world as a project manager who leads teams and supports teams through their actions. Let's read page 72 really quick. It says, support team performance. One, appraise team member performance against key performance indicators. Two, support and recognize team member growth and development. Three, determine appropriate feedback approach. And four, verify performance improvements. Now, if you have never really led a team or worked with a team in a management capacity, you may not have a very robust idea of what these KPIs could be. So I want us to take some time out. I want us to actually read through this book a little bit. So I'm going to put on the audio version of the book just so that you can listen in to what this chapter holds. So let's listen in a bit to the book, page 72 and beyond. And we're going to talk about support team performance. So let's listen in. 3.1 Appraise Team Member Performance Against Key Performance Indicators This first enabler is centered on appraising team member performance. Team performance assessments typically follow training and development of the project team. This is used to determine the team's improvement and effectiveness. The end goal is to identify areas for improving the project team's performance such as training, coaching, mentoring, assistance, or any other necessary changes. Key performance indicators KPIs, are an indication as to whether team members have improved or not. According to the PMBOK guide, the evaluation of a team's effectiveness may include indicators such as Improvements in skills that allow individuals to perform assignments more effectively. Improvements in competencies that help team members perform better as a team. Reduced staff turnover rate. Increased team cohesiveness where team members share information and experiences openly and help each other to improve the overall project. Performance. Team member KPI examples could also include Human Capital Value Added HCVA HCVA is a measurement of the financial value Profit an average employee brings to an organization It shows the average profit per employee or what each employee on average adds to the bottom line Employee Engagement Level Employee churn rate, which is more like staff turnover. Absenteeism Bradford factor, the Bradford factor is a formula used by HR departments to calculate the impact of employees' absences on the firm. 360 degree feedback score. Salary competitiveness ratio, SCR, is a measure of how competitive the current Salary is that a company offers for specific job roles. Training return on investment. Productivity. All right, I'm going to stop right there, my friends, because now you have a fairly good idea about what these KPIs are and what this whole narrative is about. Okay, so for today, I need you to read the rest of chapter three in the book. I also need you to take the quiz at the end after you go through Roy's Agile Thinking Cap. It says here, I'll just start the Thinking Cap reading real quick. It says, to support team performance, we must first understand how the team is performing. And in a more traditional world, this may be done quite formally at key points in the project 
or as milestones through the fiscal year using KPIs. In Agile, we encourage team members to appraise each other to an extent. Obviously, we need to be careful because sometimes we can get into bad behaviors if there are some challenges, but we also like to use KPIs and metrics. We've got a ton of metrics in Agile, and that could be a human resources responsibility. It could be management because management does not go away. We just separate them a little bit from the team. So management is still involved in their performance evaluations. It's a great narrative that Roy has written out. Again, if you do not have this book, you can go on down to the link below, grab it and join this 40 day program so that you are following the curriculum exactly as it has been written. Now, at the end, we have the gold zone of exam expectations. We have a section dedicated to giving you insights as to what the exam could offer. And that is on page 84. And then we get into two questions on page 85 about team performance. And it goes into page 86 with the answer, okay? For those of you who are looking for coaching and training to be able to cover this stuff fluidly and rapidly, because I know some of you don't wanna wait for all the 40 days, but if you want to get this fluid and rapidly, you need to go on down to hpmexam.com. All right. There we have training on a lot of Sundays. So go there and check out what the curriculum is. Maybe this Sunday, we actually do have one. So go on down, hpmexam.com. With that said, I want to give you some further clarity about support team performance, because I feel that it's still not as clear as other tasks. So why don't I show you a document from way back from beyond when PMI had a conversion table to convert the current outline to the old. Uh, the truth about it is the old is more transparent as far as where you can look in the guide, in the PMBOK guide, especially the sixth edition. Um, I actually went through the seventh edition looking for content to share with you around the aspect of performance. I didn't find a whole lot, but in the homework that I have for you today, I've kind of smuggled some of those in. There's um, one new concept in the seventh edition I will be asking you questions about. But let's go to PMI's conversion sheet, first of all, from way back when, and let's take a look at how some of these things convert over. So here we have Appraised team member performance, that's understandable. Support and recognize team member growth and development. So when your team is growing and developing, what are some of the ways that you can recognize them, right? It could be employee of the month. It could be uh, maybe there's a plaque on the wall somewhere, a bulletin board or web page, display positive customer comments, could be acknowledging them for their work even outside of the office. And then we have determine appropriate feedback approach. What is the best way to give feedback to the team and then verify performance improvement. So taking a look at this, PMI in time past, they had acquire and manage project resources by following the human resource and procurement management plans in order to meet project requirements. So that was the old task. So you're getting the idea. This is your responsibility. You're acquiring and then you're leading these resources. You're managing their engagement as team members on the project. Uh, you're also working on their training plans and things such as that. And as they're growing and developing, guess who is responsible? You are. Remember in the world of traditional, the project manager's role is more centralized. Also here at the last one, we have verify that project deliverables conform to the quality standards established in the quality management plan and by using appropriate tools and techniques to meet project requirements and business needs. So all this is saying is you got people on the project, you got to make sure that they are at their optimum, that they are functioning uh, in the best way possible with all the knowledge and all the assistance that they need, as well as encouragement, motivation, and support. And that's why when you get these questions on the PMP exam, they are testing you in the people area to ensure that you truly are aware of these things, okay? Next, we're gonna very quickly read through another page in the book to kind of drum this home a little bit more. So I'm gonna to go to 3.2 
and we are going to read just a little bit of 3.2 on support and recognize team member growth and development. Hopefully this will uh, clarify some ideas that I just talked about as far as how you could support and recognize team member growth and development. So uh, let's listen to that. Here we go. 3.2 Support and Recognize Team Member Growth and Development Growth and development are essential for the team to move forward. Not only should the project manager recognize growth and development opportunities, but intentionality in having a growth plan and executing on the plan is vital. To support team member roles and team member growth. Encourage professional development. Create a development plan. Allocate resources aside. Pair employees with mentors and help build their networks. Challenge employees with assignments in a positive way. Recognize the team for a job well done in various ways. Some examples of these are Email QDOS, make sure you CC their boss and the next time they are on your project, they will appreciate you. Build a wall of fame on a bulletin board or web page to display positive customer comments. Acknowledge team members for their efforts outside work such as volunteering, hobbies, sports, and talents. Take photos of your team members while hard at work. Post them on a bulletin board or on your project's web page. So my friends, hopefully that has given you a little bit more clarity on how you can actually carry out this task. Remember, our major goal as we comb through the terrain in this book is not just to take the exam. And that's why Roy and I wrote it the way we did. We wrote this book in such a way that even if you were PMP, you would find value in the contents. You would find value in actually reading through and getting ideas on how to tackle project management in the real world. So as usual, we've come to the point where we talk about homework, the H word, right? Homework for today, we have 20 questions and I want you to let these marinate. I want you to think about these. Uh, I want you to come in to our homework session having done some of this. I know some of our students have been working hard, uh, but some of you need to catch up, catch up on the homework. Don't just wait for the answers. I need you to think about it. This is how you beef up your PMP muscle, right? By thinking about it yourself before I show you the answers. All right, now here I have a few assignment numbers that I would like you to read up in the seventh edition. So you can see here, I'm asking you in number 10 to explain the Drexler Civet team performance model. That is a good one for you to know just in case you ever encounter it or the ideas from it, okay? That's one that will help you better understand this uh, particular day. Uh, we have Tuckman's ladder in there and I ask you to explain the five stages of team development as well. Um, I also say which PMBOK guide sixth edition uh, process deals with team feedback, okay? and a bunch of other things. So I'm hoping that all of the audio that I've played today is only gonna help you to better tackle these questions. All right, 20 questions again. Remember to trust the process. Just go through it, do what I'm asking you to do. You will find value in it. You will get more comfortable with the subject matter and you will be able to tear through the questions really quick to understand what exactly are they truly asking, okay? Again, I want to give you some insights into how the syllabus is. For those of you that have not downloaded the syllabus or downloaded the book, the PDF copy of the book that you can get on praisium.com, I'm gonna show you where you need to go to get the curriculum, if nothing else, right? I know some of you 
are going to use more of the Pembok Guide 6th edition and 7th edition, and that's okay, right? So I still espouse the knowing what is in the 7th, knowing what is in the Agile Practice Guide, and knowing what is here, okay? But what we have done is condensed all of that and put a lot more flavor in into this. It's 600 pages, by the way. All right, so if you want to download the PDF that has the curriculum, going down to this link right here, all right? Scroll down, look for that link, click on that, and you can download it. And for today, if we zoom in, for today, which is day three, I am asking you to read 9.4, develop team, 9.5, manage team, and I'm asking you to get really good in the agile practice guide that I just showed you the reminder, Agile Practice Guide, I'm asking you to get good with chapter four and chapter five. And I'm also asking you to, to hone in on page 93. Page 93, what is on page 93? So on page 93, we have the way projects are tackled from an Agile perspective under the topic of resource management. I'm not sure if you've ever caught this whole uh, narrative in the Agile Practice Guide, but at the back of the book, pages 90 to 95, they break down for you how you can tackle each knowledge area from an Agile perspective. All right, so in our next video, we are going to be covering the homework. I am given uh, sufficient time for the homework, so while I try to post every day, on some days, I may post twice. One is gonna be the day proper, just like this, and the other is going to be the homework so that you can compare notes. Um, also, if you have not taken the Myers-Briggs drag and drop test that we have at our free course page, so if you have not been to the free course page, I'm going to show this to you free course, free PMP course. All right, so if you go to this page, which I'm going to put in the links below as well, you see we have a number of drag and drop exercises. Uh oh, we're having trouble here. I uh, may not, not it's on. uh oh, okay. All right. So um, my Zoom crashed momentarily. Let me go back and try to revive that page. All right, so here's the page. Just click on MBTI drag and drop. It's gonna take you to another page. And um, yeah, my web is not acting very good right now. Um, so I apologize, but I'm gonna try put a link below. And in that link, um, you're going to be able to go to the Mice Briggs drag and drop quiz and take it. Because when we talk about KPIs, things like that, you need to be very aware of how the whole Mice Briggs thing works as well. All right. So on that page, I have three drag and drops, one for process, one for risk. But the one I want you to take is the green one for MBTI. Right. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this. Remember, this is really all about motivation and encouragement for you to go do the work. This is not the work, right? This is just us conversing about what we need to do in the book. You still got to do the work. You still got to read. You still got to look at the plan, the curriculum and do it. This is just to keep you on the straight and narrow. So my idea is like in the morning, you kind of listen to this for the day, you go off and do the work, you go off and answer the questions. And then in the evening or whatever that time span is in your time zone, you come back and watch the homework. You take the quizzes. If you are on the immersion program, you watch the videos because you know, those of you in the immersion program, we have 35 videos, one for each day where I cover some of this stuff for minutes on end. So you need to watch those videos. You need to go in and do the work. Then you need to come back and ensure that we're on the same page before moving on to the next day. And that's how we do it. We read a book. Do the homework, take a quiz, go back. And ultimately, at the end of the people section, you will take the people mock exam in the book. 
At the end of the process section, you will take the mock exam in the book. And at the end of the business section, again, you take the mock exam in the book for just business. And then when all is said and done, you will take, if you are on the full program, hpmexam.com, you'll take the 180 question test, just like the PMP exam. All right. If you have any questions about how any of this works or you want to be part of it, put a comment below um, or send an email to support at praiseon.com. Got any questions whatsoever about the content? Same thing. Okay. Remember, this is put together to inspire you, to help you to be more aware that you need to be accountable for your PMP exam success. All right. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video.